Welcome to auditing the purchasing process risks, inherent and control risks. First, let's discuss and re recollect the functions of the purchasing process. We talked about the requisitioning process where you're actually initiating and approving the actual liability, then you're purchasing, and that's usually done with purchase orders. You receive those items that you did order. Once you have the PO, the receiving document, you will have the invoice as well that your clients will pay. And in these invoices, you may get the allowances and the discounts that are applicable. The actual disbursement of the money happens, the reduction of accounts payable takes place when that payment of the invoice is made, and lastly, everything is recorded in the general ledger of the company. So basically, we go through these major functions to talk about each area and what we do when we audit them. So one of the key areas in which it can serve as a great internal control is segregation of duties. So in this case, what we're going to discuss is the purchasing function itself and then what you should segregate. So for example, one individual should be responsible for that requisition where you're initiating and gaining approval, purchasing and receiving functions, because if one person does that, then you might get a uh, fictitious purchases. So this could be like a theft. So we wanna make sure that we do have the proper segregation between requisitions and receiving. If all to get, they're done by one individual, you're more likely to be susceptible to fraud. Then the invoice processing, that entire function should be separated from AP, because otherwise we have the same issue where you can have transactions with wrong prices or any wrong terms, the cash disbursement could actually be made when you didn't receive the goods. So this would lead to an overpayment of those goods and obviously that's theft of cash. Then the disbursement function as well should also be segregated from the accounts payable function. So here you, if one person is responsible for both, again, we're susceptible to fraud. And lastly, the AP function should be separated from the general ledger function. So this table shows you the entire segregation of duties between the functional areas and who should be doing what. Now, inherent risks that relate in terms of the industry is, is the supply of raw materials adequate? And if so, how volatile are these prices? So as an auditor, you must consider that to ensure that these purchases are actually recorded at the correct price. You may also have misstatements that are detected in prior audits. So usually the purchasing process is not that difficult to audit, but it does present some issues for us. And here the experience would be helpful and but from past audits, but that can also be an inherent risk because you're just taking certain things for granted. You also have control risk, and there's major steps for these control risks, right? First, you have to understand and document the entire purchasing process to ensure that it's relying on the strategy of the organization. You, as an auditor, have to perform the test of controls, and then you have to set and document the risk associated with those controls. Keep in mind that our auditing function is an integrated audit, meaning we not only audit the financial statements, but we also have to audit the internal controls. So the internal control risks surrounded around information systems and communications, we have an issue with every major class of transaction in the purchasing process. You, as an auditor, should obtain in certain pieces of information that can serve as your evidential matter and your evidence for the audit. So for example, what does the company do? How do they purchase the items? What's their process that you use for cash disbursements and returns? In the accounting records, do we have the adequate supporting document with the one, two, and three-way match? One being the PO, two being the receiving information and the shipping, and then three being the actual invoice and ensuring that it was paid in proper time and what method it was used to pay it. And then the flow of each type of these transactions from the beginning to it's from its inception to actually the end, which is a recording in the financial statements. So in this part, you, we would like data flow diagrams. So these data flow diagrams allow us as auditors to document the process. And lastly, you want to make sure that the estimates are, what estimate procedure is used and make sure that they are properly recorded on the financial statements. Estimates provide a high level risk for us because we rely on management to give us those estimates. 
So once you test the controls and you basically have that level of control risk that is available, then you've got to test that using that level of control risk. So the risk guides how much testing we're doing of the internal controls and if no modifications are needed in our plan to ensure that we have to, that we have kind of worked around the detect, detection risk. So here you may have to do substantiative procedures. And when these tests do not support the actual planned level of control risk, then you pretty much have to lower the level of the detection risk. And that basically when you're lowering detection risk, then you have to increase your testing, in this case, substantiative procedures. And that concludes our video lecture.